Hey everyone, Teamfight Tonka here. Uh, with 10.24 slated to come out tomorrow, I want to go over the major system changes this patch um, and basically how we should be looking at the game now. Um, so this will mainly revolve around chosen odds and general odds to hit units, but I want to go over the player damage changes as well uh, since it, it can be pretty important now along with the loot changes early game. Uh, so I'm lucky enough to have some time off over the next couple months, so I will be streaming full-time Monday to Friday from 9am to 4.30pm PST with a large focus on TFT and content creation. It helps me a ton if you like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, uh, and if you feel like watching me play and you want to pick my brain on some of the things I talk about here or how I play the game, you can catch me at the Twitch link above my head. Uh, but yeah, let's get to it. What a quality title card. Okay, so this is not a full patch rundown. Like I said, we're just going over the systems. So there are chosen odd and regular odd changes along with player damage adjustments and early loot changes this patch. It is a lot. Uh, and that's not even covering the crazy amount of champion changes. Uh, so looking at the notes, it feels like the goal is for there to be an actual early, mid, and late game, uh, because currently there really is no real mid game. You skip rolling at level five and six to wait for seven, uh, and then you do the donkey roll lottery and head right into the four cost units. Uh, and what that means is that three cost units are generally ignored for the most part, unless you hit a good chosen one like Kindred or maybe Keeper Cannon to get you through that early game. Um, you're really only looking for the high roll picks uh, while waiting through levels five and six. Uh, this is because on live right now, there's a crazy high chance of getting your four costs at level seven um, and just four costs in general. Uh, and it's the first break point where you can sort of reliably roll down all your gold and start looking into any end game comp. Um, we'll dive into that a bit later, uh, but the big takeaway is that these changes should ideally move people uh, into actually playing with levels 5 and 6 in a more meaningful way, um, where you actually focus on playing your 2 and 3 cost units in a comp now, uh, because you have to wait to level 8 to sort of put together your endgame comp. Okay, uh, so for the loot changes, uh, I've been lucky enough to play a bunch on the PBE and even earlier today on the Japanese servers where patch 10.24 has been live for about five or six hours now. Um, the biggest thing with the loot changes is that there's basically no more two gold starts. Uh, there's a low chance of duplicate items uh, in the patch rundown. I believe more was going over it. Uh, basically on live in 10.23, it was possible to natural four of the same item. Uh, unlikely, but still possible. Uh, and they've they've changed that so that you can only natural three of the same item total. So you'll never naturally pull more than three cloaks. Um, apparently, they've also increased the diversity on getting other items. So if you've already pulled a cloak naturally, there's a lower chance that you're going to pull a second cloak before you get something else. Uh, they've also lowered the chance at early Nikos. Uh, so the idea seems to be to get everyone off to a more balanced start which sounds great and really does feel a lot better from the games I've played so far. I think the lowest gold start I've gotten was six. Um, sorry, and that's gold, uh, including like champion gold. So the game that I got six gold, it was actually three two cost units. Um, the, the early game feels a lot better now, I think. Uh, so it's something to look forward to, especially if you are prone to insta tilting from a two gold start or a Nico start. Okay, uh, and for player damage. So not huge changes here, but I think they are meaningful. Um, so players basically take more damage on stages four and five. Uh, sorry, on stages three and four, and then they take less damage at stage six. Um, so this seems in line with what I pointed out above, uh, since taking more damage in the early stages becomes increasingly risky to greed and hold on to all your gold if you're losing badly. Uh, this makes it so that to preserve health, you actually need to roll and make a decent um, decent board instead of playing a board of one-star garbage while you hoard all your money and greed. Um, the flip side to this is if you're already winning early game, like you've got a crazy strong cultist start or you just have a really strong board, it may mean you want to actually push levels at the expense of some econ to deal more damage to lobbies where players are visibly greeting. Um, I, I think this is going to happen a lot more at lower elo because I know a lot of people go into these games 
with the comp that they want. So they will hold their items, they'll hold their units, they'll hold their gold, and they will wait to get to that optimal point. Um, so if you're in something like gold or plat or even low diamond, uh, it's probably going to be worth it for you to push early five and six so that you can actually deal a lot more damage to these people who aren't trying to play the game properly, I guess. Uh, note that the damage at stage six goes down by two, which is pretty big. So we should be seeing less players who... Right now in the meta, what you see is you see people who win streak all the way through the early game, uh, and then they end up going from 90 health down to like 30 or 40 in the span of three-ish rounds. Uh, that shouldn't be happening as much. If you play well early, you are less punished late. But if you play worse early, you're punished a lot more, and you'll see that damage curve go down, or uh, that damage curve go up. Uh, so... You'll probably we'll probably see less people dying around wolves, but you'll probably see a couple more people dying like around or right after raptors, right? So it's not a huge change, but I do think it's meaningful to know that you will take damage if you are greeting with a very poor board. Okay, so let's dive into the meaty stuff. I have zoomed in. Let's go over some of the biggest changes of the system odds. So according to Mort, this is an important point too. The odds of seeing more chosen units goes up uh, in general, regardless of what level you are. So I don't know how this changes some of the built-in mechanics, like automatically seeing uh, at least one chosen by 2-2, or being guaranteed to see at least three chosen before the end of uh, stage two. I'm not sure how those factor into it, um, but if we take it at base value, you should be seeing significantly more, sorry, I'm not going to say significantly, you should be seeing more chosen units in general uh, this patch compared to last patch, obviously if you're not holding a chosen. So the important thing when we're looking at these numbers um, is, is really level seven, but it's also most of it. So I, I can't stress enough that the way we've all currently been playing the game on live no longer works. If you save all your money, push level seven and donkey roll for a four cost chosen uh, in 10.24, you won't have a good time. Um, the big numbers we're looking at are right here. So on live, you have a... 30% chance that you're chosen at level seven is a four cost unit. But with this change, uh, it goes from 30% to 5%. So don't do it. Do, if you're looking for a four cost chosen, you can't do what you did on live or you'll lose. That That's all I'll say to you. Uh, other things to note is that um, on live, it's generally worth it to break econ at level three and push for four. Um, because the chance of a two cost chosen uh, for stage two, two is, is 60% at level four, right? Um, with the change going from 60% to 40% at level four, um, it, it feels less worth it, especially since you might actually be more inclined to hit a uh, chosen one cost unit. Um, because as, as you'll see later, the chances to hit one cost units actually goes up across the board at every level. So it is going to be statistically significantly easier to three star one cost units. Um, again, it's going to depend. Um, but in the games I've played, I actually haven't pushed for early, even if I'm waiting on a chosen, um, because I would rather hit a good one cost chosen to get me through my early game. Um, so some break points that we should be looking at now uh, is that for two cost chosens, uh, you want to be level five now. Uh, for three cost chosens, you're looking to be level six or seven as it's 45 and then, oh, sorry, uh, level six and seven uh, because it is 40 and 55%. Um, and for four cost chosen, you really want to be level eight or nine for that. And obviously five costs is the same. You can only get them at level nine. Um, but the big takeaways here are going to be level six, seven, and eight. Um, so at level five, another big hit was actually three cost chosen. So if you're sitting at level five, you're doing a bit of rolling. Uh, you're not going to see as many kindreds or yumis just sort of flying through the game right after or right before Krugs, uh, people will have to be level six to be consistently seeing those three cost chosens. Uh, so, so basically what this means is that uh, on live right now, as soon as you hit level five, 
you have a 80% chance at a two or three cost chosen with a 30% chance being a three cost chosen, which means it's usually never worth it to take two cost chosen unless they are Zed or maybe Sharpshooter Teemo. Um, but this change really opens up the ability for you to consciously say that I'm going to be level five for a little bit. Maybe I should stick with the two cost chosen until we hit level seven or eight. Uh, so something to keep in mind. Um, also, people now are very unlikely to sell their chosen at level seven anymore because there's really not a point to do it. You sold your chosen at level seven before because that was a break point for four cost chosen. Uh, and because that's no longer the case, because people are going to go to eight, uh, th there's if you've got a strong chosen, you are going to try to ride that thing out to either three star them or sell them at level eight. Um, and yeah, that's going to be unless you're bleeding incredibly hard. Like, let's say you've got a uh, Vanguard Wukong and he's still one star. You hit seven. Then, yeah, it's probably a good call to sell him at that point. Maybe you hit that 5% chance at a four cost chosen. Um, but at the very least at seven, you can have a high chance at a three cost chosen. So let's dive into the changes to the normal roll odds now, because this is also a significant change. Uh, the biggest one we'll point out is actually it's most of it is that the chance to hit four cost units goes down at every single level except for level eight and nine, where they basically remain the same. Um, and the percentage that they take off of hitting that seven cost unit or the, um, the four cost unit is put into two cost chance at level five and then one cost chance at level seven, six and seven. So what I mean by that is. On live, at level 5, there is a 5% chance to hit a 4 cost chosen. That gets knocked down to 2%, and then that extra 3% is put into hitting a 2 cost unit. Uh, sorry, I keep saying chosen. We're just talking about normal odds right now. Uh, and then if we look at level 6 on live, uh, there is a 10% chance to hit a 4 cost, and that is bumped down to a 5% chance, and the extra 5% is put into 1 costs. At level 7, it was a uh, 15% chance to hit a four cost unit, and that is bumped down to 10. And then the extra 5%, again, put into one cost units. And then at level eight, they changed uh, the five cost chance from 6% to 5%, and the extra percentage goes to one cost. So that's when I mentioned earlier how I personally think it's probably a better call to try to get a strong one cost chosen. Like I think Yasa's value went through the roof in this patch, along with things like Bubble Bobble Nami and uh, Diana and Lissandra, despite their nerfs, uh, because it's a lot, it's going to be a lot easier to hit those units because they get an extra 5% at basically every level that you need them. Um, so this puts a lot more pressure on being able to play uh, and two star your one, two, and three cost units early uh, and playing chosen units that you may have been ignoring in the roll down lottery on live right now. Um, so it it the early play style is going to be different, but it's going to be the same in terms of playing your best board. You just have to be able to play your best board for longer, which a lot of people may not be doing. And also, your best board might change because of how late you can hit those four cost chosen units. It's probably going to be viable and needed to actually try to three star um, three cost chosen units. Like if if you've played recently, you know that keepers are very strong. Um, so hitting that chosen cannon early enough might mean that you just commit to that and you try to hit a three star cannon. Um a lot of things people don't know because we haven't seen a lot outside of really jinx is that three star three cost units can absolutely slap and can carry certain games, especially with the right compositions. Um, I think we're going to see a lot more of that and I'm very excited. I have seen it so far in PBE and again on the Japanese servers earlier. I've gotten my ass handed to me today a couple times, but it's been a lot of fun seeing the diversity in the game so far. Uh, something else to note is that slow, slow rolling at six is going to be so much stronger since you'll be running these low end units until level eight. Uh, so you need to stabilize before you choose to go to eight and do a larger roll down, right? Uh, so that's going to mean using this gold properly, playing these early levels a little harder, a little more aggressively if you're winning, um, 
and really just trying to stabilize of such a strong board as, as quickly as you can. Uh, the other effect of this is that it makes hitting a four cost at level five and six a lot worse because the odds are really against you now. Like like we see here, there's a 2% chance to hit a four cost at level five. If you were, say, to hit a four cost, uh, an ash at level five, that's great, I guess. Uh, you can run ash with hunter, um, but it means that you're not going to hit a two-star ash probably until at least level seven, unless you are crazy out of your mind lucky, right? Because there's only a 2% chance for a four cost to show up. And then what, I think there's eight or nine four cost units in the game and you need it to be a duplicate of that same unit three times. It's not going to happen uh, in most cases. So what I mean by it being worse is that Unless it gives you a direct power spike, you need to be aware that you have that wildly small chance of two-starring them until at level seven at the earliest. Um, but it's important to know that because an early four cost unit is four gold. Um, and you have to really be able to understand if it's worth the investment in that unit or if it's better off to sell them to make econ points, which is not something you really do on live right now. You generally don't sell an early four cost unit um, because you know that that level seven roll down is so close. Okay, so let's get into what all these changes mean and how it changes how you level and play the game. Um, so I've created this handy little chart right here for you guys. Uh, I still think if you decide to play the game exactly as you played uh, on live last patch, you'll be fine aside from the level seven roll down. But if you choose to early level to four, early level to five, hit six at three, two, hit seven at four, one, hit eight at five, one. You can follow that level structure. It'll be fine. Uh, that basically just means you might uh, be mindlessly putting your gold into that build. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's there for a reason. It works, right? Now, what I do think, uh, the reason I think this is a more optimal way to do it now is because there's so much more gold in the early game and because the chance of hitting a chosen two cost early has gone down by 20%. Um, I think it's almost always better to natural your way to level four, unless you're on a crazy win streak or you just have a bonkers board at two one that you think you can beat everyone with. I think you let yourself naturally hit four at two three and you almost always have 20 gold in the, what, five or six PBE games I've played recently and then the four games on Japanese servers I played on 10.24. I've always had 20 gold at Carousel uh, with a win streak, a loss streak, and then two games where it was just win, loss, win, loss, because I've gotten so much gold early and I just made sure I hit those econ points. Uh, so what this means is, so level five and six, it's a little tricky. Um, I think, depending on how much gold you have, if you got the 20 gold at Carousel, usually you're sitting at about 60 gold by the time you get to Krugs, especially if you are in a win or loss streak. Um, so even though level 3-1 isn't an interval you would normally level on, you can put the four gold in to hit level five here right after Krugs, and then you immediately go to level six on 3-2. Um, so we're basically, I think level five is probably the most insignificant level in the game right now. Um, even though level seven got nerfed, you can still roll and hit three cost units. I don't think there's any benefit to spending any time at level five. Um, I think you hit level five, you go to level six with 50 econ at this point, uh, and then you ride that through. Um, so this is obviously a good case scenario. You've got a decent board. You're not worried that much. Maybe you roll down a little bit between now and, uh, wolves uh, to stabilize a bit but really what you're looking to do is try to stay level six as long as you can because you don't get the same power spike from hitting seven as you used to if you manage to high roll like a shen or something and you want to put put that in with your aurelia comp so that you can have early adept then sure maybe you go to level seven at round four one but if you can hold off to level seven until now you'll be sitting on a lot of gold so Basically, what we want to do is move that hoarding gold mentality um, that you used to do to get to level seven, and you want to get that to eight. 
um, while you're slow rolling and making your board a little better. Uh, so something to keep note of is that you're not actually putting all your money from six and seven, all your excess gold, you're not putting that into levels. You are going to be slow rolling it until you have a board of about everyone to start realistically, except for your four cost units. Um, as soon as you have that stable board, uh, usually it's probably going to be around the time you do hit level seven. Uh, you don't want to spend too much time on seven. You can roll down a bit, maybe roll down to 40 gold at the lowest, uh, unless you're just bleeding hard. And then you want to econ back up to 50 and put all your money into leveling to eight again. Uh, so at level eight, you have a choice to make where there are three paths that you're going to choose to take. You're either going to slow roll at level eight to three star your three cost units because it is still statistically the best level to slow roll for three costs to get them three starred. Uh, you are either going to do that. You're going to sell your chosen unit and donkey roll it out to hit your four cost unit. You're going to play the lottery. You're going to gamble your money away uh, similar to live right now. Um, or you are going to not donkey roll, but you're going to roll down a little bit and then you're going to try to go to nine. If you are going to nine with the changes in chosen odds to hit a chosen five cost unit, I think it is always the best option to sell your chosen unit, especially if it's not a four cost and look for a chosen five cost unit. Uh, so those are your three choices at eight. This is the breakdown. I will include a picture of this. Um, but just, just be aware that level five and six has the most sort of choice on when, when you want to hit it. I put no value on level five. It is literally just a step before six. I don't want to spend any time there. I don't want to lose econ to get there. Um, I just want to hit six. I want to play that out. Uh, I might roll a bit at seven to stabilize, but seven and five don't really care about them. They don't offer real breakpoints for the way that you play the game, I think. And that is it. That was a lot. But again, these changes are super important. Um, if you take anything away from this, it is to play a bit more aggressively early. Play with your gold. Don't hoard it all until after your level six and your board is sort of stabilized. Um, if you roll all your gold at level seven, thank you for the top seven because you're going eighth. And yeah, uh, let's... Let's chat. Let's see what you guys think about these changes, how you think it'll change the game. And if you think I'm wrong about any of this, uh, leave some comments below. Talk about how your games have gone and what is working for you to climb that ladder. Good luck, guys.